Hey folks, you know, I don't normally do unboxings, but I've been very excited to get this little item in. And this little item is a holster from Black Rhino Concealment. You know, I learned about Black Rhino Concealment by doing a web search, watching some uh, YouTube videos and links and so on, doing some reading, and uh, they come very well recommended. Now, the, one of the reasons that I selected Black Rhino Concealment for my holster project is uh, because they're one of the few companies that make sort of a custom or semi-custom holster specifically for the H&K 45 Tactical. The difficulty with this pistol, apparently, is the fact that it has suppressor height sights and a threaded muzzle. So I found Black Rhino Concealment and in early January, late December, I placed an order to Black Rhino Concealment for the exact uh, holster that I was really looking for. Something that will attach to Molly on my range vest. Um, by the way, I had asked some questions to Black Rhino Concealment and they were very quick in answering my questions. So that's another thumbs up for them. In about a week or two after I ordered it, they shipped my order. And now, about a month and a half later, I have received it. Now this has no bearing on Black Rhino Concealment. The package was, unfortunately, lost shortly after it ended up in the hands of the Postal Service and there it sat for 30 days and never moved. I contacted Black Rhino Concealment uh, and they agreed it probably was lost, certainly was lost, and they rebuilt my holster uh, and shipped it again. Here's the thing that happened between the time I originally ordered my holster and the time it was kind of rebuilt for me. Black Rhino Concealment came out with an upgrade for the exact same holster that I was looking for that included a, an active uh, retention system. And that's one of the things I was really looking for in the first place. Couldn't get it anywhere, so I said, okay, well, maybe these passive uh, retention systems will work just fine. And the reviews suggested that it would. But now that they have offered an active retention system, I ask them to add that at a little bit extra charge to me, no problem, uh, and they did that. They reshipped it, it came UPS very quickly, and here it is today. So the official unboxing right there. Let's see how this thing looks. There's not going to be a carrying case for a holster, but um, I am curious how it all turned out. Let's take a look. Well, there we go. That is the finish that I asked to have put on it, and that is their active retention system. I'll have to kind of figure this out. And they have already installed it on the um, Molly system, which is one of the attachment points I asked for. I also purchased some additional ways that I can attach it. So it's a very versatile holster. This is a Safari Land UBL mid-ride attachment point. You can see the three attachment points. This would be for the belt and the same three attachment points here. So removing this, attaching it to that item should work out real well. You know, I don't use holsters too much, especially, well, I have some real basic uh, holsters, but I'm from the time of, uh, it's got to be a nice leather holster when I was military police quite a number of years ago, holsters were leather. Uh, I actually still carried the 1911 in those days with the flap over the top. And then we transitioned to the Beretta uh, and uh, had a little bit nicer 
higher riding uh, leather holster and um, I've never really used Kydex before kind of shied away from it but I guess it's about time to get with the times and I thought I'd give this a try well let's see how this fits here's one HK 45 tactical absolutely empty in fact I'll go ahead and drop and inspect the mag close this all up I'm gonna put her on decocker now one of the things that they asked me uh, is how do I carry this or how do I want to carry it and I told them that I will carry this uh, my range vest the safety on in a decocked position and so it should fit perfectly in this configuration and uh, by the way the passive retention looks pretty darn good all by itself removing it a little bit of effort is required that's what you'd want that's what I want and this is the active retention system right over here clears that hammer and there's a little button right here that when it's pulled backward releases this retention strap and away we go this is their carbon fiber black color and as you can see this holster fits my HK 45 tactical like a glove now I want to get some range time with this holster and this pistol to kind of really give it a try under uh, live fire conditions if you're interested in seeing a video on that let me know by putting that in the comments well I've been practicing and testing out this new holster and I have a few observations I'd like to share first of all the molly attachment really didn't work out for me I attached it to my uh, range vest and uh, it's something about the fabric material that's on that range vest that I have on the fact that there's these uh, built-in mag pouches and it makes it I'll call it floppy or kind of loose and the entire holster wants to fall away or flop away from the, um, the, the range vest and I don't really like how that turned out um, it's not really anything with the holster itself though uh, my son has a range vest that is made with a little bit thicker or sturdier material and when I attached this uh, to that vest it really worked quite nice uh, it sat in a very nice upright position and, uh, and and worked out quite nice so I don't want to give the wrong impression that there's something bad with the holster uh, and with that molly attachment uh, because that's not uh, actually the case it's with my vest that I have the other thing I'd like to say is that perhaps to improve it even further and make it even more rigid and a little bit tighter connection with a range vest I think what I would have done in the future and I might still do this uh, by placing another order for a very similar holster but I think what I would do in that case uh, is not order it with the active uh, retention system that will then make it much much tighter against either this Safari Land UBL mid-ride or uh, with the Molly attachment and then obviously tighter with the range vest the other observation that I wanted to to make is um, uh, regarding how this active retention system works and as you can see I now have it mounted on the uh, Safari Land UBL mid-ride very stout sturdy connection um, and the way that it works and it has nothing to do with this individual connection it's all with this um, active retention system if a person gets in a hurry and you try to pull up on this gun before 
it releases, it's going to jam. So for instance, if I am lifting up on this and I try to release it, it won't release, okay, until I push down again, okay. So what I've started doing, just practicing uh, some draw here uh, in the house, is I will press down just a little bit, just a little bit of weight, a little bit of pressure uh, on the grip, and then release the retention, and then finish the draw. Kind of becomes a two-step process, but with a little bit of practice, it will become second nature. And that's one of the other things I wanted to talk about with any new holster or probably any new equipment that you have at all. You cannot expect, or I can't expect, shouldn't expect, that everything's going to work perfectly well um, out of the box. I mean, it's going to function perfectly well out of the box, but there's this learning process. And it's very important, especially with firearms, I would say that we build very, very good muscle memory. Uh, doing those dry fire or uh, drawing the holster or drawing from the holster uh, repeatedly will certainly build that muscle memory. You know, I've, I'm also a big fan of the Mantis X10. The Mantis X10 has a training session on holster draw and it can be done in dry fire. So mounting that, uh, that holster on your belt in the house, in the garage, whatever, a person can get some pretty good practice uh, perfecting the holster draw, the presentation, all that, uh, and get some feedback from that Mantis X10 without ever firing around. As a final rundown, you know, I like this holster. I know I said earlier I'm so used to a leather holster, but uh, I can certainly get used to the Kydex. I kind of like how this looks. It's a nice looking holster. Certainly fits very, very well to this HK45 Tactical. Uh, and there are some other options a person can put on uh, these holsters from Black Rhino Concealment. Number one, I could, uh, if I mounted a red dot system here, I could have this holster or a holster made to perfectly accommodate that red dot. If I have a flashlight or something like that mounted to the Picatinny here, I could certainly um, have Black Rhino Concealment build the holster to accommodate that as well. And I'm kind of wondering if Black Rhino Concealment could build me a holster ready for use with the Mantis X10. That would sure be neat and very, very handy when I go to live fire out at the rain. So overall, no complaints on the holster. I've got some learning to do. I got to get to know and familiarize myself even better with this holster lots of dry fire or draw practice right here, and then ultimately heading out to the range uh, and getting some practice under live fire conditions. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video.